Good morning, friends. It's Julie, and welcome to Reseller Tuesday. And today for reselling, we're going to talk about online versus brick and mortar selling. I have um, two antique booths in the same antique mall, and also I ha I sell mainly on eBay for online sales, so I do both. But I wanted to sh highlight some of the pros and cons of each. So if you can only do one, or you're thinking about the other, you can make a little bit more informed uh, decision. And as I go, if you have tips, pros and cons that I missed, because I know I probably don't have them all, please drop them below so other people can uh, benefit from your wisdom. All right, so shop booth. Now, when I say brick and mortar, it does not have to be in an antique mall. You could be doing flea markets. I mean, you could have, instead of brick and mortar, you have tents or tables. You could have your own store, all kinds of ways of selling personal, like face-to-face. -face. Maybe it's better to say face-to-face, -face, but brick and mortar is what most people know. So the pros of doing this are, um, you don't have to ship. <laughs> And which is, a, you know, could be a real benefit because shipping, you have to do it every day if you're online and you're selling every day. Um, you don't have to write a description or make a listing. You, all you do is buy the item, clean it up, stick a tag on it, put it out there, and you're done with it. Um, it is more passive that way. So you could uh, just do one day or two days of work and let it go. Um, if you don't own your own store, if you have the antique booth or the vendor booth that uh, you just rent area in a mall. Now, it's a little different if you have flea market. Yeah, you can still just work a couple days a week, but you're on when you're doing that. The inventory is not in the house, mostly, except your back stock, which <laughs> there's some people with quite a back stock. That is, you know, if you have the vendor booth. There is actually a flea market uh, south of here that has their flea market out of storage units. So what you do is when you have that weekend where your flea market is open, you open your door and voila. So what, isn't that a brilliant idea? Um, it is on the way to Yellowstone, so of course it gets a lot of weekend tourists. So keep that in mind for a business model. It's kind of interesting. All right, it is also easier for me to network. Networked a lot with the Karen Transition people, and she also has the antique booth. Um, and other people I've met, that photographer. So all kinds of face-to-face um, net, -face networking, and you can find people locally. I'm not to say you can't network online, but it's different when you keep seeing, seeing visually the same people over and over. And also you know, because you're impacting your, your local area most of the time. All right, so those are good things, but what are the cons of having an antique booth? The you know the not so great things. You have limited space because you rent by the square foot. Of course, you can go up as high as they allow you to, or your customers can reach. Um, but you ha you are limited to a certain size booth. Another one is you are going to have theft in at you know, whenever you're face to face and having your goods out there in front of people. And I, you know, you just kind of have to expect that and adjust accordingly budget for that because theft does happen. Um, it is also more expensive to have a face to face place because you need to be paying the rent. Like in my, for instance, in my antique mall, uh, we're paying for the, the building, the utilities, the employees, um, the cash register, all the programs. And, you know, I'm paying somebody to manage the shop basically for me. And yeah, it's per, per square foot, it's more expensive than it would be if you're going to open up your own shop. But I don't have to be there. So you pay for that um, in your rent. And whether you make your rent or not, you, I mean, make enough money to cover it, you're committed to that. And it's not easy to downgrade or upgrade your shop like it would be um, like on eBay. You have a contract and if you're going to upgrade to a bigger booth, it involves a lot of moving. So it's also more physical too which is the next one um you need to arrange things and merchandise things and make it appealing to people so you can't just stick things in um, although you probably have seen booths that it just appears that somebody shoved things in a booth because there are some people who rent a vendor or antique booth because it is just as cheap as storage sometimes getting a storage unit and then they might make some money back so to them it's a storage unit um, unfortunately so let's look at online sales well, what are the pros of this and some of them are the cons and the of the other one but you have a broader audience to sell to um, like here I'm in near mine are in Billings Montana 
and I have a small audience because the it's the largest town in Montana and it draws about, you know, it's about 100,000 people. And then the surrounding areas are quite small. So we don't draw a lot of people with high bucks. Uh, so being online, you can um, appeal to the worldwide, however you want to do it. And then you can demand higher prices for your items. Some postcards that I sell online, like if I put a $20 price tag on it, I probably would not be able to get that price locally. And another thing is, if I have a high value postcard, I'm going to have to lock that in a case at my booth because somebody could easily pocket that, put it in their purse or wallet, whatever, because it's so small. And another pro of having an online store is you can start it where you're at. You can start it at your kitchen table, at your desk, in your living room, take a few pictures, start the ball rolling, and sell a few things. And you can start small with a very little investment, not so the antique booth because um, you do need a minimal amount of items to fill a booth. With inventory management, um, yeah, you have to keep all the inventory physically in your house or storage unit or whatever you have, but you can always get another storage unit to have more inventory. You could get a shed, build a shed on your property, whatever, or take over your kids' rooms after they're grown. Um, so you can keep growing your inventory um, and you know, if, expand it to the space that you have. Okay, another pro is um, you don't have to leave home. <laughs> you can, you know, it, gas prices now. I mean, just going to town is expensive for me because it's 25 miles each way. If I wanted to, I could totally source all of my goods off of eBay and then turn around and sell it on eBay because I buy in bulk and then I sell it um, individually. So I could easily do that without ever leaving the house. I don't have to go on any trips if I didn't want to. So if you are more uh, homebound or you don't like to go out and source, you want to save a little bit of money, you could do that. And two, I'm sure there's other places for whatever you like to sell to find things in bulk online because there's so many things online. So the cons, the downsides of having an online store with inventory you have to store it all physically uh, so like there are some people with antique booth who only have a box or two of inventory to tag and put in their booth every week so the uh, footprint in your house is small but whereas ebay or other online platforms you have to have it all you can't just stick it in a store and also you have to be attentive to your store at least every couple days now for me i've been selling at least you know one postcard a day so i have to in the morning i make sure to ship i do put that it's two day shipping which came in handy one day when i had a flare up and i just really even couldn't think of getting to my desk um, so that gave me that grace period but um, you better believe I was on my store shipping the next day because I had that two-day shipping and whether I could get out or whether I feel good or not, it was going out. So you have to be attentive. So if you like to, if you can't be attentive all the time, then it may not be what you want because you also want to li be listing regularly, um, refreshing your stuff, uh, answering questions. With all these pros and cons of each, um, you have to wait which one is going to work best for you in your lifestyle, whether you want to be more attentive day to day and do it from your, you know, never leave your house, or do you want to just be passive and buy stuff, you know, on the weekend, stock it in Monday, Tuesday, you're done. Granted, ha renting an antique booth and putting stuff in it does not mean you're going to make a profit. So there are other videos I can talk to you about that. I do have one about antique booth math, but there is a lot more into it than that. Whereas um, in, if you're selling online, you instantly know people are looking at things. And uh, if you don't, if it's not selling in a month, you just, you know, you can do something, reduce the price, whatever. I kind of think that diversification is a good idea. I had my booth before I really ramped up eBay and I've had antique booths before, you know, being in Montana, I did some in Minnesota. I think that in today's world, you might want to do both because the ebb and flow of each. So for instance, during the pandemic, when we had that, what was it? Seven days just to stop the spread or whatever that was. But during that time, we had to close down the store, the antique store because, you know, all the stores had to be closed. So during that time, you know, of course, there's no customers and we still had to pay our rent. So we were almost, I think, about a month with no, with having to pay our rent and not getting any 
um, any income or any sales from that. It's very expensive because, you know, we're in the hundreds of dollars to rent a space. We're, we're on eBay right now. I think I'm spending like 30 bucks a month. But on the other hand, um, as we're seeing a lot of resellers online are talking about summer slowdown, uh, I have seen my booth sales increase. The la this month and last month, um, my rent was covered in the first couple days, which means I had more than $300 in sales in the first two days, both months. When my eBay sales have been down this last month or so, then my booth has been up. So they help to cover each other. Also, when I buy large lots, I don't have to worry about are these all going to, you know, majority of these going to be good for for online? Are they all going to be valuable? Because uh, I don't have to worry about that because the, the less valuable postcards or the more common ones, the damaged ones, I put in my booth. So that is my case where you could diversify into two kinds. Now you can also diversify in each. You you know, just because I'm an um, eBay reseller doesn't mean I'm not looking at other platforms. I also sell on Bonanza. You know, I'm thinking about maybe Etsy, Dell Camp. You know, I don't think I'm going to go back to HIP. I had a, an issue with that. Um, that's another story. Gosh, I could go down so many rabbit trails, but I'm not. I'm sticking to this subject. Yeah, so you could diversify within your market. Um, just kind of be strategic in your cross listing but it's good to have a backup too in case something happens to your ebay store if all of a sudden they have a glitch and then you lose listings i've heard that happening i haven't had it happen to me yet knock on wood or they say oh sorry you are suspended because you did this and you're like i don't know what i did and now my income's gone so yeah it's good to have um, multiple options for each but you know build up one first until it gets going and then look for other ones okay so physically yes doing a brick and mortar face-to-face -face selling you can certainly diversify there too you can have um it probably would be smart of me not to have both of my booths in the same mall uh, because what if it closes or, or something happens, they have a fire, if, you know, whatever. But uh, so some people have multiple stores if they're making an income on this, sometimes multiple towns. Different towns have different feels to them and some people are willing to spend more money on certain things in one town than they would in another. Or you do auctions too. You can certainly buy high value and really nice stuff and figure out what people want to bid on on an auction. So those are the pros and cons and let me know what you do. A beginning reseller, not really sure yet. Um, do you do online or um, brick and mortar? Um, do or you do a combo like me? So I'd love to hear your thoughts and, and also if this has helped you to uh, solidify some ideas and maybe spur you on to, you know, diversifying into the other one. I'd love to hear that too. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a joyful day. Goodbye.